Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast 7.3, where we're going to talk about what an empirical formula is, and what your formula is, and how to calculate it. So, bust out your calculators, and your periodic tables, and your smiles, and get ready for podcasting fun. If I have 35 grams of NH4NO3, how many grams of oxygen do I have? Now, this is the only thing that is a recap from, actually, I think, podcast 7.1. Um, if I want to figure out how many grams of oxygen are in here, I need to first do the percent composition of this. So if I'm looking at oxygen, I need to first find the percent oxygen in NH4NO3. So um, for this, N equals 2. And I go to the periodic table. So 2 times 14.01 is 28.02 and hydrogen there's four of them times go to the periodic table 1.01 4.04 and then I have oxygen which is 3 times 16 which is 48 add that up 32 40 80 80.06 and to find the percent oxygen it would be 48 over 80.06 times 100. And that percentage is 48 divided by 80.06 times 100 is 60.0%. Uh, so if I have 35 grams of NH4NO3, then 60% of 35 is oxygen. Okay, so that means 0 0.6 times 35, remember of means times, is means equals, so point, oops, let me clear that a little bit, so 35 times answer is 20.98 grams, this has two sig figs, so my answer should have two sig figs. I changed my color, I thought this was a darker color. Hopefully this will show up a little better. Empirical formula. The empirical formula is the reduced formula. So C6H12 with, um, has an empirical formula CH2. See how these can both be divided by 6? And you get that. Water's molecular formula is H2O. What is its empirical formula? Now, molecular formula is the exact formula. Well, can I reduce it anymore? No. Same. Right. So the empirical formula is the reduced formula, but sometimes the reduced formula is the exact formula. Okay. This means, so find the empirical formula. So this means we need to find the subscripts. So, for example, the 2 in H2O and also the 1 in H2O. The subscripts represent atoms, right? Two H's and an O. So remember, this really looks like this. It looks like Mickey Mouse, right? Two H's attached there, which we group in moles. So it would be one oxygen and two hydrogens. I always go through moles. So what we're going to do is convert grams to moles and get moles into whole numbers and then multiply by two or three if needed. So let's go ahead and check some of these out. A substance is 58.266% iron and 41.734% oxygen. Find the empirical formula. Okay, so we are going to assume 100 grams, except for I wrote 110, 100 grams. So I have 58.266 grams of iron and 41.734 grams of of oxygen. So I'm looking for something that will give me F E X O Y. Okay, so I'm trying to find these numbers and those are in moles. So I'm going to convert each of these into moles. Hopefully the they'll be whole numbers and life will be good. So H U grams of iron. So one mole of iron. And little G stands for go to the periodic table, fifty five point eight five. Same thing down here. H U grams of oxygen. Go to moles of oxygen. 1 mole and 16.00 when I go to the periodic table. So when I do that, 58.266 divided by 55.85 is 1.0433. Notice I use a lot of numbers here. 41.7, whoops, 734 divided by 16 it gives me 2.608. And then these are not whole numbers. Well, yeah, they are. If I look at this, I have 1.0 and I have 2.8. So if I divide by the smallest, 
1.0433 and divide by 1.0433. So notice I want these to be whole numbers. Now these are 1.0 and 2.1 and they're pretty close. But if I divide by the smallest, this will turn out to be 1. And then if, oops, I said 2.08 and this is 2.60837. So um, 2.608375 divided by 1.0433 gives me 2.500. Okay. Now this is basically one. This is two and a half. Okay. So right now, if I was a moron, I would say it's Fe1 O 2.5. But we know we've never seen fractions here. So what we're going to do is multiply top and bottom. What I do to the top, I do to the bottom by some number to give me a whole number. So if I multiply them both by two. This becomes 2, and this becomes 5. So I get Fe205. Notice, remember, way back when this is Fe, way back when this is 5, and I chose to multiply by 2 to get it to be a whole number. So the only ones you need to know is 0.5 would be times 2. 0.33, 0.66-ish would be times 3. Right, because these are thirds. That's one third, and that's two thirds. And that's it. Kempot is 40% carbon, 53.29% oxygen, and 6.714% hydrogen. Find the empirical formula. Again, assume 100 grams, because we can pick whatever we want. 100 grams. So that means I get 40 grams of carbon. I get 53.29 grams of oxygen. And I have 6.714 grams of hydrogen. And again, go, well, that's kind of a G, to moles or through moles. So, hate your grams carbon. Go to moles of carbon. I love moles. And hate your grams of oxygen. Go to moles of oxygen. Go to the periodic table. Hate your grams of hydrogen. Go to moles of hydrogen. Equals, equals. So 40 divided by 12.01 is 3.33. That makes me think of a third already. Oh, 06. And 53.29 divided by 16 is, oh my gosh, by golly, 3.3306. Oh, and then 6.714 divided by 1.01 gives me 6.6475. Now, as much as I said it makes me think of a third, I'm still going to do what? Always divide by the smallest. And I do it to all of them. Whoops, that's not another decimal point. Because I'm trying to find ratios here, right? So I'm just trying to work them into whole number ratios. So this clearly is 1, and this clearly is 1. And my second answer, divided by 3.3306, is 1.995. And if you don't think that's 2, you're just being bizarrely anal retentive. Okay? So it is C1. O, one, H, two. Okay, you would not show the one. So C O H two. Okay, that's it. Let's do another. Seventy-five grams carbon, twenty-five grams hydrogen. Seventy-five grams carbon, twenty-five grams hydrogen. By the way, do you notice how here it is important that you label these guys so that you know what they are in the end? So, believe me, I do as little extra stuff as possible. Hate you grams of carbon, I'm going through moles, aren't we all? Hate you grams of hydrogen, I'm going through moles, aren't we all? One mole is 12.01 grams, one mole is 1.01 grams. What? Where did these numbers come from again? Oh, little g means go to the periodic table. I remember now. 75 divided by 12.01, 6.2448, 25 divided by 1.01, 24.75247. What do I do now? Divide by the smallest. That equals 1. And that answer divided by 6.2448 is 3.964. You need to be, remember, your choices are a half or thirds or whole numbers. That right there is a whole number. Because it is not.
0.5. It is not 0.666. So it is a whole number. And those are the only ones that we'll have to deal with. Okay. So that means I have CH4. Dink. Molecular formulas are exact formulas. Water is H2O. Remember I drew the picture? Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. And hydrogen peroxide looks like this with little H's and little H's. So it looks kind of like a Siamese 20 Mickey Mouse. Sugar is C6H12O6. Notice how it's not reduced. Finding molecular formulae. Uh, molecular mass is the mass of the exact molecule. Okay, so this is going to be given the exact molecule. So this would be the mass of C6H12O6. Okay? Or you'd have to look that up. Find the empirical formula mass. Go to the periodic table or do the empirical problem. Remember the grams to moles to divide by smallest to get whole number. Alright, get the whole number by multiplying. That's my empirical problem. And use that as a multiplier. So, let's take a looky. A substance has an empirical formula of CH2N and a molecular mass of 112.6. So, this is how much the whole thing weighs. So, I want to know how many fit in here. Okay? So, I need to put a number on this guy. So, one carbon is 12.01, two hydrogens are 2.02, .02, and one nitrogen is 14.01. 28.04. So how many 28.04s fit here? I think that's 12. That's 4. Jeez. It is 4. So that's my multiplier. So then I take CH2N, kind of sort of, times 4, and I get C4H8N4. Woohoo! Uh, that's what I did. The other compound made um, 25 grams of hydrogen, 75 grams of carbon, has a molecular mass of 80.25. Now, if you recall, and I do, that empirical formula was CH4. So I would have had to go back. There you go. I have to go to here, and notice I got CH4. So I have to do all of that work. I wanted to save it so you didn't have a 35-minute podcast. Do, 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 do. So, whoops. So, if CH4 is my empirical formula, then my empirical mass is 12.01 plus 4.04. Again, go to the periodic table. Go to the periodic table times 4, 16.05. So, if I have 80.25, I want to know how many 16.05s fit in here. So, divided by 16.05. That, I believe, is 5, but let's see how I do. 80.25 divided by 16.05 is 5. So that means I have CH4 times 5. C5H20. Woohoo! And we did that. Why do we care? All right, so finding empirical molecular formulas allows chemical engineers to design molecules and make life better. So if I find something in a Brazilian rainforest that cures cancer, okay? Look, it cures cancer, and I'm able to extract it. So I know it is this little molecule. As soon as I can figure out what its formula is, what its empirical and molecular formula is, then I can design what it is and find out how to make it. If it takes 35 years to make this tree, but through the wonders of chemistry, I can build this, I can make a million pounds, in two weeks, that saves people's lives. Right? So that is wonderful. And then we can do great things like chop down these forests and put up Best Buys. Okay? So in Brazil, where they don't speak Chinese or Japanese or whatever that is. So that's it. So please don't mention Brazil. Oh, by the way, I'm still bitter. Brazil got my Olympics. So to review, always go through moles. Empirical is reduced. Molecular, find the empirical, and then find the multiplier. And then guess what? We're done. Toodles.